I'm Nana from Ghana. Um, first of all, I'd like to say it's an honor to be invited here to talk to all of you. Uh, my topics on uh, implementing green and sustainable design in the age of climate change and urbanization. A case for urban heat island elevation. Well, um, when I picked this topic, it was very difficult for me not to come at it from an energy point of view. So um, I tried to stick to pretty much the basics of urban design and uh, um, development. So it might be a bit general because I tried not to get uh, too energy minded. Okay. So, like he said, I'm Nane for Sonasam. I work at the Constromat. It's a multidisciplinary engineering firm in Accra. I had my bachelor's in civil engineering and my MSc in environmental engineering. And so we're going to go through all of this. I'm going to give a little background and then also uh, talk about adaptation and then uh, benefits. And if there's time, play a little video. Okay. So when it comes to uh, climate change, which is all the rage these days, uh, we have people talking about increase in temperature. Uh, this increase in temperature generally uh, affects our way of life. You see it on a broad basis when, you, when people talk about the, the melting ice caps or changing rainfall patterns. And you also see it in um, the rising sea levels. But then uh, how exactly are these related to uh, the cities? In this diagram, you can see that there's been a va Ooh, sorry. There's an increase, almost an immediate increase from uh, this side all the way, and it's projected to keep increasing uh, almost by one uh, degree by 2020. And so uh, this is just to give a visual uh, indication of what the world is like. This is uh, the temperature in uh, the global temperature uh, trend in, uh, 19, in 1884. And this is what our world currently looks like in uh, 2017. And uh, I'm going to get to cities very soon, but first I want to talk about uh, urbanization. Now, for the past few years, urbanization has been uh, on the rise. We have uh, projections of about 66% of people living in urban areas by 2020. I think in Europe and uh, the Western world, it's set to increase, it's set to have 82% uh, of people living in urban areas. And in Africa and Asia, where the rise is expected to be the highest, you have about, it's expected to have about 95 people living in urban areas in Asia and in Africa. And so these are the projected uh, rises all the way up to 2015. So I'm from Accra, so uh, I picked something that was familiar for me. If you look at this, this is the, uh, what do you call it, the impervious surface area in Accra in 2002. And let's keep in mind that in 2002 was about 16 years ago. And uh, there isn't current data for 2018. The closest I got for Accra was 2010. But if it's following the same trend, then there's supposed to be an increase. If you look on this side of the map and also on this side, you can see that the built up area density has increased. And all that is due to uh, trends in uh, urbanization. You have more people moving to the cities because that's where life generally is lived. And so, uh, and where the economic uh, basis of most countries is. So you have more people moving there and then that increased the uh, built up area. Okay, so how exactly are we uh, linking climate change and urbanization? Well, the thing is, cities are the places that have a higher percentage of people living there. And so that means that most of the impacts of climate change is going to be felt in cities. You have an increase in uh, temperature felt uh, more in cities. You have uh, stresses on uh, water infrastructure, on waste infrastructure felt uh, 
more in cities as well. And so there are many ways to go about solving this, or many ways of implementing uh, green design in, uh, with regards to climate change and urbanization. But I'm just going to focus on urban heat islands because, well, there's not enough time to talk about everything. <laughs> So uh, urban heat islands generally have a temperature in the urban area significantly higher than what's in the surrounding rural areas. So you have the rural areas having a relatively lower temperature than what's in the built up area. And the temperature decreases with respect to how built up the area is. So then you have a, the suburban area, though the temperature might be high, but not as high as the built up urban areas. Now, I talked about climate change and I talked about urbanization, and uh, I haven't really related it to exactly how this is causing uh, urban heat islands. But as you uh, know, what happens in most cities is that we tend to build outwards, and when there's no more space to build outwards, we tend to go upwards. And uh, that, uh, the size and the shape of our cities, is in a way affecting the. Um, how do you say? Um, the formation of these urban heat islands. Uh, for most part, most of our urban areas are virtually deserts. We have very little green vegetation going on in there. We uh, tend to focus on, uh, well, especially in Accra, in uh, concretizing everything. So you have uh, people building their houses and then they kind of pave the entire surface and then they leave no uh, room for um, grass or vegetation. And these uh, materials being used tend to absorb um, a lot of heat energy. And so that concentrates a huge amount of heat in that specific area and exacerbates the effects of urban heat islands. We also have a urban haze where um, what do you call it? You have the uh, community pro producing a lot of uh, greenhouse gases in terms of their energy use, in terms of their transportation use, and then you have this smog in the area also trapping in heat, preventing uh, radiation from going out, and so kind of like a blanket, it stores the heat in there and then it uh, causes the heat islands. The anthropogenic heat and energy use is my favorite part. You have a, take a city for example, you have people in there who, uh, especially in tropical areas or during summer, it's hot. And so we tend to turn on our air conditioning and that releases waste energy and also uh, that waste energy makes the surrounding atmosphere hotter and then we tend to use more of our air conditioning and so it's a vicious cycle as we can see here. But why should we care about uh, elevating UHIs? Because um, I mean it's hot, it's only going to get hotter as we can see from the very first slide. So why should we actually care about it? Well the thing is it impacts our health in the sense that most of our uh, senior citizens and our children are most susceptible to changes in climate and we have a uh, more and more uh, heat wave related incidences uh, and diseases take Japan for example they've had a heat wave over this uh, past summer and then they've had people dying and it's old people who are um, and young kids who are feeling the effect of this and also climate change in the end, I'll introduce a graph where it shows that uh, reducing UHIs has the tendency to reduce climate change because we're using less energy. That means we're releasing uh, less uh, greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and we're reducing the effect of climate, um, climate change. It also saves us a lot of energy in the sense that um, well, if energy saved, I'm going to, well, I'm going to take energy and cost together. If you're not spending so much money cooling your building, you're going to obviously save money and that energy can be used elsewhere. Okay, so there are many, many ways of adapting, a lot of which aren't mentioned here. But 
because I'm an environmentalist, I'm just going to focus on the green aspect of it. But I'm talking about the green roof systems. So we're going to have, um, it's good when we're engineering to try to think past just the building that we're having. Think about the future implications of the building. What exactly am I putting in this building that is going to uh, is going to raise the energy cost of the building? Is it going to raise the monetary cost of the building? Is it going to help in any way resolve or even contribute a little to resolving climate change issues? These are all examples of ways we could incorporate that. Take the green roof system for that. Research has um, <coughs> research has shown that. Um, Implementing that can reduce the, um, sorry, can increase the cooling effect uh, of the building and reduce your surrounded temperature by about 0 0.5 to 1 degrees. We also have the cool roof systems. Oh, sorry. We also have the cool systems, which reflect a lot more energy. And so you can see that it reflects um, with the normal roofs with the uh, dark surfaces that don't reflect. You have them uh, reflecting about 20%. But with the green, uh, cool roof system, you have reflecting about 80% of that energy off. And that's energy you save in cooling down your building. Another favorite of mine is the uh, green facades. It actually provides a cooling effect. It, uh, and in addition, as well as with the green roof systems, it uh, absorbs uh, carbon dioxide emissions. And so you have it having kind of like a double effect for passive cooling systems as well. We should try and implement.